It's going to take a lot of force to get out of this mess. How would you get the truck out when a tow truck can't reach it? When there's not enough force available to do a job, a mechanical force transformer can come in handy. A mechanical transformer like this block and tackle can amplify or magnify force. It can take a small force and transform it into a larger force that acts over a shorter distance. We have seen that in a mechanical system, work is done when force moves an object through a distance. A force transformer changes work into a more useful form by changing the amount of force and the distance. But the one thing the transformer cannot do is increase the amount of work. That would be getting something for nothing. So although the force might be increased, it's at the expense of the distance. Force transformers are usually very simple devices, ranging from levers to pulley systems. Let's look at the first case, the block and tackle. Work is done on the input rope by force pulling the rope a distance. This is the force in and the distance in. At the same time, the output rope does more work lifting the drum by pulling upward with a force and lifting it a distance. This is the force out and the distance out. The force exerted on the drum by the rope is greater than the force he is exerting with his muscles. That's the transformation. But the block and tackle is not doing more work than his muscles. If we measure the distances that the two ropes cover while they're moved, we can see that the drum only moves a short distance while his hands move much farther. That's the trade-off. The force was increased at the expense of the distance. If the workout is to be the same as the work in, then the change in distance should be the same as the change in force. In other words, if there's twice as much distance on the input side of the transformer than there is on the output, there should also be twice as much force on the output side compared to the input side. This number of times the force is increased is the mechanical advantage of the device. Mechanical advantage tells you how much of an advantage the transformer will give you. One way to find mechanical advantage is to measure the distances and forces on both sides of the transformer and compare them. But for the block and tackle, there's a much easier way to find the mechanical advantage. All you have to do is count the number of ropes that support the load. If there's two ropes, it has a mechanical advantage of two three ropes and it has a mechanical advantage of three, and so on. It's very convenient that the number of ropes tells you the number of times the input force will be multiplied by the device. Can you see the mechanical advantage of these devices? being a little tricky on this one. Although there is a mechanical advantage of four, there's actually another pulley system on the other end of this arm that makes a mechanical advantage of eight. Finding mechanical advantage by counting cables is quick and useful, but it only gives us the ideal mechanical advantage. It assumes there's no friction among moving parts. But there's always some friction. So if we were to actually measure the force in and the force out of these devices, we would find that the force was not multiplied quite as much as the number of cables would indicate. That's simply because some of the force was used up overcoming resistance. So it's important to find the actual mechanical advantage. Another kind of mechanical force transformer is the lever. A seesaw is a lever with the pivot in the center. A force on one end will produce an equal force moving through the same distance on the other end. But if the pivot point is moved closer to one end, the long end will move farther than the short end, and an advantage appears. 
Now, a force generated on the long end will be transformed or magnified into a greater force acting over a shorter distance on the short end. The mechanical advantage of a lever can be easily found by comparing the lengths from the pivot to the end. In this case, the handle is 10 times longer than the lifting arm, so there's a mechanical advantage of 10. You can also compare the distances the arms move. In this case, the handle moves 10 times farther. So that means that 100 pounds of force exerted on the handle will be transformed into 1,000 pounds at the wheel of the boxcar. Levers come in different classes. The lever itself is called a first-class transformer. But the wheelbarrow is a second-class lever, based on where the load, the force, and the pivot are positioned. In the case of the wheelbarrow, the load and the force are on the same side of the pivot. A good example of a third-class lever is your arm. You will be calculating the mechanical advantage of these types of levers in your print material. Probably the simplest force transformer is one you've used many times but never thought of it in this way. A ramp, sometimes called an inclined plane. A ramp takes the work it would take to lift an object straight up and changes the distant element of that work. When the distance is increased, the force is decreased. That makes it easier to move the object. You just have to move it farther. Whatever type of force transformer you use, it will provide you with the advantage you need to do specialized work. But the one thing a force transformer will not do is give you something for nothing. Uh, 